So today we're going to do a quick video on uh, how to change brakes on a 2016 Ford Edge. This is the uh, all-wheel drive version with the 3.5 liter in it. So I only can show you these with this model. I don't know about the other ones, the four bangers and it went in a two-wheel drive only. But anyway, I thought I'd put together a little video just for fun, just to try to show people who are thinking about doing this on their own to save a few bucks, um, kind of what there is involved in doing it. So anyway, just to talk about a few bucks. I bought all the parts from Napa and I got premium rotors and pads. So I didn't go with the cheapest bottom of the line and my bill was still 460. The front rotors on these things are pretty expensive, but um, calling around to the local shops and dealerships to do brakes on this vehicle is about $800. So I'll be saving, hopefully by the time I'm all done here, about 300 bucks. And uh, I'm using some fairly basic tools. So I'll, I'll show you what those tools are here. So some of the tools that I'm using and I know some of you are gonna criticize me, but that's all right. Very large channel locks. And we've got a 3 8 ratchet with a, with a 10 millimeter on it. Yes, 10 millimeter. We've got a breaker bar with an 18 millimeter, a 9 16 wrench, 9 16 socket, half inch ratchet wrench. That's for when I break them loose, I switch over to the ratchet wrench. Large screwdriver, large persuader, and this is the one everybody's gonna laugh at. There's an Allen wrench in there, or Allen headed bolt, that I don't have that size of an Allen. It's a 7 16 and it's New Year's Day, and I'd like to get this job done. Everybody's closed, all the parts stores, so I just searched around a shop and I found a chisel that happens to be 7 16 Allen. It fits it perfect, and I can put the wrench on there, or you can put the box end wrench on there. It works fine, but uh, sometimes you have to improvise when you're doing your work at home. So anyway, first thing you do is before you jack the car up is you break the nug lug nuts loose. Uh, you can use a four-way wrench for that. I don't have that here. It's on the other side of the car, but anyway, break those loose. Then for me, I'm just jacking up one corner at a time. If you have the means, you can jack the whole car up and rotate the tires while you're doing it as well. But I'm just doing one at a time. So I'm gonna get this tire off and we'll look at what we gotta deal with next. All right, so we have the wheel off now. <clears throat> and the disc really doesn't look too bad. Pads are getting down there. And we'll look at those when I get them all the way off. But the next thing I would do before you start disassembling is Open the hood, go to your brake master cylinder, take this lid and open it up and just set it on there, okay? And so you don't forget that to help remind you that you need to tighten that lid back down. I open that up just to um, allow the air to escape because when I pull these calipers off I have to squeeze the pistons back in that pushes the fluid back into the master cylinder which of course will try to push air out now that cap is vented and maybe I'm doing overkill by opening it up but I'd rather be able to breathe and allow that air to go out than to have some other issue happen but anyway next thing is I'm going to take this caliper off first we remove the spring and it can come off with some authority. There's probably a better way of doing this, but that way it seems to work pretty good. On the back side of the caliper, you're gonna see two plastic caps that you should be able to get out just with your fingernails. Get them started. Here's the second one. Inside there is those Allen bolts, the slider pins that are the 7 16 I'll get my trusty redneck wrench on it, Allen wrench. 
good lid in there. Yeah, I'm breaking loose. Now you'll just take and slide these pins back and out of the way. <clears throat> you don't have to pull them all the way out. You can, but you don't have to. So the pins are now pulled back and out of the way and the caliper is loose from the vehicle or from the holder. The only thing holding in place is the tension that's still on these brake pads squeezing the rotor. And you take the large screwdriver, stick it down in between the, the disc, the rotor, and the inside pad, which is pushing against the pistons, and you just give it a gentle pry, and you'll feel it slowly move back. That's pushing the piston back in there. And on this case, it's got dual pistons. Once you get it back farther, you can stick the screwdriver in there a little deeper and take a bigger bite. Don't get too crazy on trying to rush it. Just let it push nice and easy back in there. Once you've got a gap in there, you can take this caliper and see how it gets loose. Now when you remove the caliper, it's a good idea to try to hang it in some way. Use a coat hanger like this, stretched out, or zip ties, or even a rope, or whatever you can find. Wrap it up around something up here, so that when you remove that caliper, you can hang it instead of letting it hang from the brake line. That's really tough on brake lines. And it's easy to crack one or break one. And then you got a lot bigger project. Once you have these pins removed, slid back out of the way, and you've pried that brake pad in, pushing the pistons in, and you got the caliper loose, now you just kind of wiggle it, and it should. It might fight you a little, but it should come out. And then take it, just try to be real gentle with the uh, brake line as best you can. And set it up here on the top and pull this brake liner out too. That might have been one causing a noise. Oh yeah, that rotor is really rough. <clears throat> Next, in order to remove the, in order to remove the the rotor, we have to remove this caliper bracket, and it's two bolts right here, 18 millimeter. Now we got the caliper bracket out of the way and our caliper is strapped up and out of the way here as well and in safekeeping. Next thing is remove the rotor itself. That's what the big persuader is for. Taking a closer look at this pad, the old one, you can see the groove in it. And of course you can see the groove in the back side of the rotor. So there's something going on there. And I could feel that in the car, I could feel that in the pedal. It wasn't warped, it was just rough sounding. And uh, this car's got 73,000 miles on it and it's never had a brake job. So I'd say they did pretty well. Got our money's worth out of that. And it was time for some new ones. Now before I put the new rotor on, I like to try to take a wire brush and clean some of this scaled rust off. Now 
along with removing the rust. On the new rotor, I like to apply a little bit of anti-seize on the back side here for the next guy or me the next time. If I have to replace these, a little bit of anti-seize on there will help these rotors come off. I don't put a lot on, just a dab in between each one. And then I take a rag and I just kind of smear it around. Sort of like a paintbrush. Now we put the new rotor on. And you see how it's kind of floppy? I like to put something on there to help hold it tight to the hub. It just makes putting all the uh, the caliper bracket and the caliper and the new pads on a little easier. For me, I found like a little bit of a spring and I'll take an old lug nut and I'll push it on there. And that's all you need to help hold that on there while you put all the rest of the parts in place. And while we got the caliper hanging up there, it's a good time to pull these pins out. Clean them up and grease them up. There's two of them. Your caliper slides on these pins and if they get stuck on these pins, it will only use the inside pad to stop the vehicle. Your braking abilities will be reduced quite a bit and you will wear out that pad in no time. And then suddenly you're back down to metal on metal and you got a perfectly brand new outside of the rotor and a brand new pad on the outside. So it's important to grease these. I just take them and wipe them down, make sure they're not pitted. These are look like they're in perfectly good shape for 73,000 miles on them. Just wipe them down and then I use a little bearing grease I've got some old bearing grease from, gosh, I don't know how long. Pretty old, but it's still good. And all you need is a light film. You don't need to make them completely gobbed up messes. Just a light film on there and take it and slide it back in. The new pads. I'm going to slide this one in place. The other one that goes on the caliper has these clips that slide inside the caliper pistons. Let's hold the caliper there, get it started and push them in. Push these slide pins that you just greased back in so they're flush or a little beyond flush and then try to slide this caliper back into place. If it doesn't go Easily, it could be because, well, that one went easy, but sometimes the pistons will want to move back out as it's hanging there. Hopefully they don't pop out on you. Um, you can put a clamp on them to hold them in place so that they stay, but most of the time they'll stay where they're at. Slide the caliper back into place. Once the caliper is back in place, you start screwing these pins in.
and put the plastic caps back on. And in with the brake pads, you should have gotten a new spring. You need to reinstall that. It's good to give it a good look over before you start closing everything up. Make sure that something didn't happen to the brake line and you didn't realize it. Make sure nothing got broken. Make sure your caliper is still dry at the bottom. So sometimes if you're a little rough or the caliper's getting a little wore out, you might blow a seal while pushing those pistons back in. So you wanna make sure that none of that's an issue before you close everything back up. We'll remove my little handy tool for holding everything still. And I'll put the wheel back on. All right, so we got the front brake done. I went ahead and I did the other side. It's pretty much the same. So we'll move to the back brakes. The back brakes are a little different. They have the parking brake on them and stuff, so it looks a little different. It's still basically the same, but you will need a couple of different tools. I grabbed a few different things. I did grab some zip ties. It's easier to zip tie the uh, caliper up and out of the way. I got a different size can of lock this time. Um, I don't need that sort of homemade Allen wrench I used on the front. I'm now using a seven, I think it's a seven mil. Anyway, I think it's a seven millimeter. Um, Allen wrench there for the caliper, but one of the weird tools is this guy, and, and this is a sorry for the camera there. One of the weird tools is this guy, <clears throat> and it's uh, it's because of the parking brake. It has a rotating piston inside the piston. I'm not sure how to explain it, but this tool will screw that piston back into place, allowing you to get the new pads put in place with a new rotor because everything's brand new everything's very thick so I'll show you how that works I got a couple of 7 16 wrenches the big persuader and then I do have I showed you that to hold the rotor in place but I also have this little sort of tool I call it a tool I'll have to show you what that's for um, it you may or may not need that but it does come in handy so let's get the tire removed and take a look at the caliper So as you can see, it's a little bit busier looking and a little different. This spring here is much lighter duty looking and uh, there's more going on back here with the, that's your brake line and I believe this is the electrical connections for the parking brake because on this one it's electrical, electrically actuated. I think this is some sort of a speed sensor line. Um, obviously be careful of all of that stuff. You don't want to make the job worse than it needs to be. So anyway, first thing we're going to do is take the spring off and then we're going to get the caliper out of the way. Same as the front. We're going to push that piston back in to allow us wiggle room to get this up and off of here. And then we'll work on this bracket and then we'll work on the rotor. Once we get that off, we'll start to go back together.
So now we got the caliper off and the bracket off. We're gonna look at doing the rotor, getting that off of there. And just like the front ones, they like to rust on there and they can fight you quite a bit. So you can try to persuade her, give it a little hit. I don't like to hit things too hard. I, I use a bigger one because I'm in a small space. And you get quite a bit of power with a very short swing in with a bigger hammer, but that's definitely on there. So I do have a, another little trick that I do once in a while when I get a stubborn one, and that's where this comes into play. I'll show you how that works. So where this, the caliper bracket came off, you got two holes where these large bolts came out of. And we're gonna utilize one of those holes as sort of a press. And how we do that is we take this nut and bolt and I turn this nut around. Hopefully you can see that. And I screw it all the way on. And then I have this large area washer, fender washer. Slide that on there. Slide that backwards into the hole. Like so. And then I unscrew that bolt. I try to screw the bolt back out of the nut until it hits the back side of the rotor. And it acts like basically a press. And it's only a quarter inch bolt, a quarter 20 threads. <clears throat> but you'd be surprised how much power that makes. And I hold the nut, well, or I can hold the head of the bolt, either one. It's kind of tight quarters in here with the camera. But I get a little pressure on that brake rotor. Try to push it off. Sometimes a little pressure is all you need. You can almost hear the rust breaking. And then just tap it. Same thing as I did with the front. I found a little smaller brush this time, but try to get some of the scaled rust off of there. Clean it up a little bit. And then with the new rotor, let's give it a little bit of anti-seize on the back side. Rotor on there. Put our little holding tool while we assemble the rest. bolts at the back, I don't know if I said it, are actually 15 millimeter for these brackets. The one on the front, they were 18. <clears throat> so the next part is a little different than the front. On the front, we just pushed the piston back in the rest of the way to make sure we had enough room to get it all back together, get the new pads on and the caliper back on and in place. The rears are a little different because they have the emergency brake system on there. And uh, you still have to push the piston in, but then there's another piston that actually gets screwed in. And that requires a, a special tool. So now, the rear caliper is a little different because it has the parking brake and it has a, a rotating piston. So we're gonna rotate this piston back in and then squeeze the piston. There's like two pistons in there. You got one that works with your brake pedal and then the other one works with the emergency brake and that emergency brake one rotates. 
So we're gonna try to rotate this back in with this special tool. You can get this tool at most auto parts stores. Um, it's a universal tool. It's about as cheap as you can buy it. it. It's not the greatest tool, but it does the job. So we'll screw this back in and then squeeze it together and hopefully make enough room for all our new brake linings, brake pads and rotor. Okay, that's all the way back in. I'm just gonna give it a little squeeze with the canalax just to make sure everything's back in all the way. I see it moved just a tiny little bit. All right, so the caliper should be ready to be loaded and put back in. So in the back ones, these brake pads can just get put right onto this slide. Hopefully this goes right over it. Push these pins back in. Okay, that should sit there for now. Now I'm gonna do the same thing as the front. I'm gonna pull these pins out and I'm gonna clean them up and grease them. Now we'll go ahead and put the new spring back in. You should get this spring with the uh, new pads as well. I like to start that top one. You get the bottom one close and then I grab this with the channel locks. It's kind of a battle sometimes, but that's why you get lucky. Classic caps. And you should be all set to put your wheel back on. It's always a good idea to take one last look around at everything. Make sure that nothing popped or broke or you don't have any leaks of any kind before you go putting the wheel and everything back on. And remember, we got to recheck our level. The level has actually come up a little bit from when we started, but it's not above the maximum line. And it's certainly well above the minimum. And the lid will tighten back up. All right, so I got the wheels all back on. It's on the ground. I went around and I gave them a good tightening. I do recommend a torque wrench. I don't have a torque wrench with me today, but uh, it's good to know what the torque should be on your wheels. Is they're aluminum wheels, so they're kind of sensitive to that. I just go nice and easy on them, and I've never really had any issues in the past, but it's always good to torque them. One thing I do before I go on the road is I start the car and I hit the brakes a few times just sitting here because it's the pedal's going to go to the floor because all the pistons are pushed back in. You want to push them pistons back out and then I want to take one more look under the car and try to see if there's anything leaking before I go hitting the road. And uh, so that's what I'm going to do.
Let's pump the brakes a couple of times. It feels nice and firm, feels normal. I'll give it a good hard push. I'll do it again. Feels solid. And I just try to get in there and take a good look. Any way you can, at the bottom of the wheels. If you're gonna blow a line, it's gonna leak in there. It's good to make sure that the uh, anti-lock brakes still work. It should, you should be able to bring the car to a stop, put on a parking brake, and release the brake and it doesn't move. Brakes feel a lot smoother and quieter. And hopefully good for another 73,000 miles. Thanks for watching.